We've got a guest who is joining us uh, remotely to uh, be part of our uh, broadcast here and a player who uh, certainly had some experience playing in the Ontario Hockey League and uh, we're going to bring him in. There he is, Frank Corrado joining us. Frank, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Uh, very well. Good to see you. So, uh, you know, what comes to mind is the, for you as the OHL priority selection is taking place? I, it was a really exciting day for me. Um, the, the whole season in my under 16 year just felt like this crazy whirlwind journey. Uh, just felt like everything came ahead that day and we had all my family and friends over the house. I'll admit the weather was a little nicer, like we were firing up the barbecue, all that kind of stuff. Uh, not able to do that today as, as it's a little rainy outside, but um, yeah, it was, it was such a cool day. It felt like it was the start of something that I didn't know how special it was going to be. And you look back at it um, and you realize that that's kind of where everything really started for you. And as much as it was a great accomplishment, the one message that I kept getting from people, whether it was players who were a little older than me or agent, uh, anyone who's been around the game, it's like it's, it's great, and, but now the work kind of starts for you. And I, I felt really excited about that. Second round choice of the Sudbury Wolves at the time was, you know, that morning being a 16 year old was sort of like, oh, this feels like a long day already. You know, you went in the second round, but I'm sure, you know, time probably felt like it stood still just waiting for your name to be called. Yeah, it did. It did. I can't remember if at that point we were still doing everything like on the same day or if it was different. I think everything was on the same day. It so was we all one day. Of, yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was all one day, so we were sitting around, and then you start doing this, like, inventory as far as what the teams ahead of you are picking. Like, oh, they just picked the D-man, they're probably not going to, you know, they're not going to be interested. And, oh, I talked to that team, that's an interesting pick that they made. And back then, like, I don't know how they do it now, but I would get letters, like, in the mail from teams saying they were interested in you, here's a little package, what they're all about, and they would call the house phone. Like, so I would be at practice, in, you know, playing for the Vaughn Kings, and, you know, my, my dad and I would be on our way home, check in, hey, what's going on at home? My mom would say, oh, yeah, just had a great conversation, half an hour conversation with uh, Jeff Tui of the Peterborough Peets. Uh, he called, we talked for about half an hour. I don't know if that happens anymore, because who has a landline? And I, I know the teams are using regular mail, so things have changed quite a bit. Yeah, just a wee bit in terms of, and uh, Daryl Woodley from Central Scotty was with us earlier. They still have some questionnaires they send out, but yeah, using some modern technology a little bit more from that standpoint <laughs> rather than uh, sending you some stuff out. So here you were, obviously, you know, from t a GTA kid chosen by the Sudbury Wolves, you know, making the move to Sudbury initially. And I'm sure, you know, just, you know, the billeting factor and coaching and moving on to a new situation. But I'm sure it was quite an experience just being part of the Ontario Hockey League. It was, yeah, it was quite the adjustment for me, especially being a kid growing up in Woodbridge. Let's just say life was a little more sheltered um, than, than maybe being up in Sudbury. But I thought it was, I, I always tell this to people, like, it was the best thing I ever did was going away, playing in the OHL, getting to know myself and growing throughout that time. I think um, it's tough to get that kind of experience anywhere else. Um, and, and even the hockey, like my, my first year, I remember not playing a lot in the early goings of the year, but I think that really kind of drove this hunger in me to try and get more ice time, get on the ice a little bit more, stay on the ice later after practice. It was like my whole life basically revolved around hockey before going into the OHL, and now it was like it revolves around hockey, but for a, like a purpose. Um, and of course, you know, going to school, I, I, I graduated on time in grade 12 with all my friends back home, which was really important to me. Um, but it was, I mean, it was, it was really cool. And yeah, Sudbury being in Northern Ontario, very different than where I'm from. And that was, you know, I don't know if I realized it at the time, how big of a difference that was going to be. But as time went on, I felt like I got used to it. Um, I still have friends from my high school in Sudbury that I keep in touch with on a, on a semi-regularly basis, if you can believe that. Like, I'm 30 years old, and, and I still keep in touch with people. Um, my billets were just recently at my wedding um, last summer. So the relationships that I've had um, in Sudbury many, many years ago, I still carry to this day, which I think is really cool. Frank, something you touched on there, and I wanted to get you expanded on it. Here you were going into the OHL as a 16-year-old, 
you know, coming out of minor hockey and Vaughn, you would have been like, okay, I'm the power play guy. I'm on the ice all the time. Now you went into Sudbury and yeah, having to work your way back up the depth chart. There are people watching us right now that are going to be in that situation. They're used to being the guy to dominate the ice time on their U16 team right now. Now they're going to come into an OHL camp, maybe come into the OHL, make the team right away, but they're going to be on the fourth line to start. They're going to get lower ice time to work their way up. How did you sort of work through that and what would you say to them? Because indeed, that is an adjustment. It's all about how you look at it, honestly. Like you could go there and say, oh, this sucks, I should be here, I should be getting this kind of ice time, all that kind of stuff. I kind of looked at it as, as like a challenge. Like how can I do things every day? Can I practice a little bit harder? Can my shot get better? Um, can I be a more accurate passer? Like you also gotta realize, when you're 16 years old, your skill set is nowhere near complete yet. And even when I got to the NHL as a 20 year old, my skill set still wasn't complete. Like I was still working on things at that point in my career. Um, so I kind of took it upon me as to like have this challenge every single day to try and get a little bit better, um, try and enjoy the ride along the way, stay on the ice after practice. And so the journey for me that season was Sudbury who I, I loved being there. I thought the, the staff was amazing with Blake Smith led the way and Mike Bellino, the head coach, and later on it was Trent Call. But my first year as Mike Bellino, he basically dressed 7D uh, to keep me involved because I was a second round pick and I, I think he kind of saw like the effort I was putting in. So that was my little bit of, you know, carrot to kind of chase, let's say. Um, and then we had some injuries. We had some players go away for under 17. Um, and next thing you know, it's like Christmas time, and the, the three months before, I've been working really hard on the ice in practice, and I'm playing a regular shift now in the top six, and it went from playing a regular shift to being like, wait a second, now I'm on the power play, and I'm a 16-year-old player, and things were going really, really well for me, so I just think you have to kind of realize that there's a foundation as a player that you need to lay early on in the season that when you get into December, you get into January, you run into injuries, maybe players are going um, and, and doing other things like the under 17s, whatever the case may be. If you're not one of those guys, there's going to be an opportunity for you. But what did you do before that to give yourself the best opportunity, uh, the best chance to make the most of that opportunity? Um, it is a long process. And even coming back from my 17-year-old season, so my second year in the league, it wasn't like, I got there and it was like, oh, here you go. All the ice time is yours. Here's your power play. Here's this, here's that. Like you're, you're constantly having to prove yourself because when you get to the next level, you get to the NHL, there's no, like, you don't just show up and play. Like there's, there's players who were in your position all around the leagues, whether it's college, WHL, QMJHL, like Europe, they want the same job you want. So how, what's your separator? How are you going to separate yourself from them? So it's really important early on to find a way um, to instill that work ha that work ethic and those habits and that preparation um, so that you're better equipped to handle that if you move on to pro hockey. No, absolutely, and something players can relate to as they come into the league as well. I remember when you played in the league, you're always very well spoken and friendly with the media. Now you're on uh, this side of the table. What's that experience been like for you growing uh, with the TSN family? It's been fun. It's you know what? Like I loved playing hockey. My second favorite thing would probably be talking hockey. And, and the reality is, I'm talking hockey anyways. Now I just have more people listening to me. Um, so you know, I'm I feel like I'm I'm still young. I'm 30 years old. I would I would like to still be playing. Obviously, um, not able to. I've just had um, whatever you want to call it. Terrible luck with injuries. Um, unfortunate circumstances. Uh, but this is basically the next best thing, and I've been given a really good opportunity at TSN. Um, one of the things I really love about that opportunity is the fact that we have the CHL rights. So we, you know, I was in the building for a London Sarnia game this year. Um, I was doing the panel for some some Guelph hockey. Um, it's been it's been a really fun experience to to be able to go back and kind of reminisce about memories in the OHL. Um, get to know some of the players that are playing now in their journeys and, and see that kind of come to fruition. Um, and, you know, one of the things that really stood out, not necessarily, well, you could say this with the OHL. Last year, we saw a player with Hamilton and Arbor Jack High. We saw him during the regular season. We saw him during the playoffs. We saw him at the Memorial Cup. And this year, we got to see him play with the Montreal Canadiens. And that was all under our umbrella. So, you know, as a broadcaster, to get to see a player go from an OHL player 
to an OHL star, to an NHL player who, you know, got a lot of attention this year for all the right reasons. It was really cool to be a part of that process and watch it as a broadcaster and get to talk about it and, and kind of reminisce about old OHL uh, experiences. Well, Frank, it's been uh, fun. It's been fun to see your journey from player into broadcaster, and we'll see lots more of you. And appreciate you spending a little time with us here on this Saturday morning. Thanks for having me.